those feathers. Which one? Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you. It's so nice to see some familiar faces that have been here with us before and some new faces. It's also wonderful to see many of our employees with their mothers. So thank you to all the mothers that are here tonight. It's wonderful to see you and a special welcome to all the moms out there. Um, this is our eighth year of the Neighborhood Health Series, and it would not be possible without the support of Clark County Credit Union. And here is Craig Fraley, just to very quickly say hello to you before we get started. Thank you, Vanessa. Good evening, everybody. We're very proud to sponsor Roseman's Neighborhood Health Series. Clark County Credit Union, we are the medical filled credit union. We're the only financial institution in the state that is chartered for medical. Having said that, we are open to everybody. Qualification is breathing. So if you ever want some financial wellness, you can come to Clark County Credit Union. We're owned by our membership. We are not for profit. We've been around for 71 years. I haven't been there quite that long. And uh, we, at the end of the year, when we make a profit, we actually give it back to our members. We're the only financial institution in the state that does that. So every January, our members open up their accounts and they find money that we put in, they didn't, and that's their share of profit from the preceding year. We have magazines on the table if you'd like. Don't wait for the movie to come out. It's a really good read. And I know people are calling in, they're so excited about this. And I also have uh, on the table uh, millions of dollars. And you know, they're on the table, take some. It is illegal to make fake money, so it has to be real. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Yes. Big thanks to them. Again, thank you so much for being here. I want to just um, tell you a few things. I think you saw the restrooms when you came in. It's definitely fine to get up and get seconds and get dessert. Um, we welcome that. We are recording tonight's um, speech a presentation so that you can see that again if you need to. And that goes on the Roseman website. So again, this is very complex information and sometimes you need to watch it back to fully understand it. So with that, I'd like to get started. I'm just going to do a little bit of trivia real quick. So. Can anyone tell me, and you cannot be a Roseman employee, how many graduates Roseman has had since inception? How many graduates? Any guesses? All of them, yeah? Anybody wanna venture a guess? <laughs> All right, okay, a little bit more. 7,200, so about 7,200 graduates, so very nice, very nice. And can anyone guess how many students we have at any one time across our two campuses, one in South Jordan, one in Henderson, and across all those programs that Teresa just mentioned? Anybody have any idea, any one time? About 1,500, about 1,500, yep. So our College of Dental Medicine is in South Jordan. Many of our students are up there. We also have a pharmacy school, a nursing school, and our College of Graduate Studies as well. So those are our programs, and we're working on a College of Medicine as we speak. So with that, I'm going to get started and introduce my very special guest. Dr. Catherine Leanna Oswald is a board-certified geriatric pharmacist with 13 years of pharmacy experience in the Southern Las Vegas area. She currently serves as the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Assessment. She's helped to raise over $700,000 in grant funding to support projects, including our Medicare call center and the free pharmacist-led medication therapy management sessions for qualifying patients. Dr. Oswald has also helped me personally when I've called frantically, trying to figure out why my mom's prescriptions were not being covered by her Medicare. So thank you for that. Teresa Rollins joined Roseman in 2019, courtesy of a Dignity Health grant to assist with Roseman's Medicare call center. Teresa obtained her bachelor's degree in biology from BYU and then stayed home raising her five daughters. In 2019, she certified with the state to become a level two Medicare counselor and she loves speaking with the elderly and disabled and deciphering Medicare for them on an individual basis. Teresa teaches a religious class every morning at 6 a.m. for high schoolers. And in her spare time, she's found sewing or FaceTiming with her eight grandkids. Teresa has also helped me personally navigate through Medicare with my mother for some of her bills and things. So you can see it really pays to have good friends that know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> 
Louis Prusa is a second year pharmacy student at Roseman. He loves to cook, go on hikes with his wife and two dogs. Mount Charleston has the best hikes, he says, and thrift. His goals after school are to hopefully do work in ambulatory care pharmacy. Vin Nguyen is a second year pharmacy student from Orange County. He's originally from Vietnam and he graduated from UC Irvine is currently an intern at CVS. He joined the Medicare Assistance Program MAP in 2021. He's interested in MTM and geriatric pharmacy, and in his free time, he likes to learn new languages, play soccer, watch TV, and hike. Lacey Quick, where are you, Lacey? There she is, is in her final year. She's a P3. She grew up in Bullhead City, Arizona. She is interested in pursuing a residency in a hospital setting. She likes to go to concerts, do archery, and she loves to go to the beach. She used to be a teacher before discovering pharmacy. Please join me in welcoming our very special guests. Thank you, Vanessa, and you've helped all of us in many ways. So that is a two-way street, being a friend and having good friends. I also want to point out that my in-laws are here as well. Uh, I don't think they'll be ashamed if I say they are Medicare beneficiaries. Uh, <laughs> and we were talking last night about some of the different parts about Medicare being in different states, uh, just what a challenge it is to figure out this book that we gave you today. Most of you get it in the mail already, but it takes 100 pages uh, to figure it out. And what I want to start with is just emphasizing that we do not represent any companies. We are not going to give you any advice on what companies to go with tonight. So if that's what you came for, that's not what this presentation is. We're going to break down what Medicare is, each of the parts of Medicare, uh, how original Medicare and um, Advantage plans work. Um, and then if you have an interest or you want to know a little bit more about which plans might be the best for you, you've got our information um, to work with our students. When we say best for you, we would look at like what, what's important to you for doctors, what's important for you for travel, what's important for you for coverage if you go into the hospital. Um, do you like to put your things together? Or do you like to set it and forget it? And the, the students and uh, Teresa, who you heard about, and then right beside her in the green shirt is Wayne Young, who's a very integral part of our Medicare call center. Um, they help to advise the students, make sure that you're getting accurate, up-to-date, safe advice. Uh, so we are not going to earn a single penny off of anything that we give to you, nor do we want to. We really do this as a service for the community. That is a little snapshot of our Medicare call center and our students at work uh, with some of it you'll see in the blue. We collaborate with the Medicare Assistance uh, Program for Nevada that is now run through Dignity Health, but basically every state gets some federal funds from a, 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 for programs called SHIP. And SHIP is uh, your state health insurance assistance program. Some of them have started to use those funds to give them to companies to run the program because it takes a lot to run it. So our state um, put it up as a competitive bid and Dignity Health is now the program that oversees the MAP program for our state. But all of the training comes from CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. There's a lot of robust training that MAP or SHIP, depending on if you go to another state, if you just happen to be here traveling, there's a lot of training that goes into that to make sure that you're getting the right information, qualified information. There's a lot of laws around behind what can be said for Medicare or not. And if you get somebody trying to pull a scam, which we'll talk a little bit about, you might get some misinformation that sounds really good and ends up costing you a whole lot of money. So just for some background, our students go through about 30 hours of online and in-classroom training. They then complete anywhere from 40 to 120 plus hours in our call center with Teresa and Wayne, guiding them through that process. Uh, they do this outside of their pharmacy doctorate degrees that they're pursuing right now. So they're really awesome. I work with some of the best students. They really volunteer and they're very passionate about helping all of you. And then they have to keep up to date. They have to recertify yearly, just like some of you are here to hear what's new for 23, what's coming. That said, we do some estimated cost savings if we work with a beneficiary uh, or somebody who's going to be eligible for Medicare, we can identify some programs they may qualify for. We've seen medications not covered and somebody who's eligible to switch their plan at certain times, uh, up to 63,000 in savings. Sometimes when you look at it in aggregate, 
Uh, and so about 1.6 million, we're a little bit over that now, closer to 1.8, depending on how it's calculated, that we've helped to save Southern Nevadans. That's just in our state, just in Southern Nevada. So really proud of the work that these speakers today do. Being, be aware of scams. Um, we're just starting with this while I still have all of your attention before you get too sleepy and we go start going through all the parts that glucose level starts to drop after the dinner that we just ate. Medicare scams spike now uh, because it's really easy to get confusing and to capture your attention with somebody who over the phone sounds like they might be providing you something, but they're really not. Be wary of anything that's a free offer. Now we'll talk about Advantage plans and how they'll loop in some extra services with them, and that's legitimate. But if they're, you know, going to give you free gas cards or free things to sign up, that's probably a scam. Um, you want to be a little bit cautious when they say we'll save you thousands of dollars, which I just said we would do for you, <laughs> right? <laughs> But with MAP certified counselors that have gone through training, Medicare will never call you out of the blue. Your insurance company might, but anybody who says I'm with Medicare, that is a red flag right there. So if you get that instead of, you know, this is so-and-so from Blue Cross Blue Shield, your insurance plan, we have a question for you, but they're saying well, we're with Medicare, uh-uh. And really try if you're here for, for a loved one, like reinforcing that because, Sometimes it's our loved ones that get the calls that think they're doing something good. My dad, the other day was like, oh, I just put my credit card information. I was like, dad, no, don't do that. Medicare is not sending out new cards. So back in 2018, 19, everybody was issued new cards if they had them because they were taking social security numbers off of the cards. That's now done. So there's no reason that you're going to be getting new cards. So also if you get called and you're said, oh, we need your information because we're providing new cards to you. Do not give it over the phone. Uh, you can definitely trust SHIP or MAP programs. As I mentioned, SHIP is what it's called in some states, MAP in Nevada. And that information is in that book, the 1-800 number or the 1-866 number uh, to call and they'll loop you to the right state where you may be residing. And then .gov, when you're looking at medicare.gov, that's the official federal site, the .gov. Medicare.com, is not, it's a private company. And it looks very similar to .gov when you first go in there and it says, I did it today. Put your uh, zip code in, tell us where you're from and we'll tell you plans that will start to save money. So when it comes to Medicare, make, sh make sure you're looking for the .gov when you're typing something in. Any questions so far? Yes. My partner was trying to set up Part B. And so he filled out the form that you had mentioned when he the phone. Um, and they wanted his Medicare number. And he doesn't know how to possibly find one. So and he would ask for the card and he would never ask. Okay, we'll talk a little bit after. Hold that question. Um, because you might see some of this that's coming forward that might answer it, maybe not, and then I'll touch base with you. Yeah. So some background on Medicare. Little history lesson, taking it backward. We, we like to try to teach you like we teach our students. So we start with the background, right? Uh, it's the 57th year of Medicare. Uh, it was implemented in 1965. Anybody know who was president? Lyndon B. Johnson was president. Now, here's where I tell you I'm Canadian, so I have no idea who the presidents are. Well, I know now that I've lived here for 20 years, but uh, back then, 19.1 million beneficiaries. He probably go a little bit crazy to think of a program that was started under his administration now that serves over 60 million beneficiaries each year. Uh, so it's really grown. So when you think about how complex it is, it's pretty complex in our nation of states to figure out how to give health care to 60 million people in a way that everyone can understand it. So they just made it so no one understands it. In Nevada, we have about 500,000, a little bit more than that, beneficiaries right now. We're going to talk about Part A. When we think about Part A, you'll hear it again and again, that's your admitted into the hospital coverage. Um, and then some of the listings here, which we're gonna go over. Part B, we think about that as your basic outpatient preventative services. Part C is combined. 
Part C is your advantage plans that actually combine part A and B, and then usually part D, which is your drug coverage. We didn't even get anybody know when drug coverage came about in Medicare. But 57 years of Medicare, when did it start covering drugs? 2006. 2006, it started up. And that's actually what prompted this program at Roseman. I became a pharmacist in 2007. I graduated from Roseman and I was inundated with patient questions at my pharmacy. And if you know me, I don't like to not know the answer to things. My in-laws can attest to that. Sometimes my father-in-law and I, we try to go back and forth on who knows more on stuff. Usually he wins. Uh, it really, really frustrated me and had a technician at the time who was working with me and he would see my frustration and be like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. We never learned about it in school. I don't know anything about drug coverage. And then fast forward, that technician became uh, an intern for, or an intern in our program when I was working at Roseman. And he identified that we could start some training, uh, which led to a, uh, uh, an on-campus call center eventually where we've partnered with the state, gotten proper training. And now our pharmacists future ones that are gonna graduate are going to be so much more prepared to help all of you and the general public than I was when I graduated and knew nothing about Medicare. I think it's important to share that because most of your healthcare providers also know very little about Medicare. As confusing as it is for you, it's confusing for most of us. And we would like to be better resources for you than we are, but the truth is we're not. Uh, and so that's again, we're using SHIP, using MAP, using programs like our one at Roseman can really help you. We also have brokers. Brokers can be good sources of information and they can be not so good sources of information depending on your broker. They are held to certain laws and they will receive some kickbacks. That's how some of how they make their money is to sign you up for certain plans. So they can get certified in different plans and may be able to give you some information. But for the most part, they're receiving some kickbacks. Whereas SHIP and MAP, we're not receiving any kickbacks. It's really unbiased information that we are providing. All right, who qualifies for Medicare? Likely most of you here are your loved ones or it's coming up, which is why you're here to learn a little bit more. Four main ways to become a beneficiary. You turn age 65 and you've qualified, which we'll cover on the next slide. You have a disability and you've been collecting social security and then you qualify for a certain period of time of collecting that, two years. Any end stage or anyone with end stage renal disease, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and then certain medical conditions can also qualify you or being if you were exposed to certain toxic chemicals in certain areas of the US, you may also qualify at a younger age for Medicare. Hopefully that's not anyone in here. All right, so you're eligible at age 65 if you are a US uh, citizen or permanent legal resident for at least five years before you qualify. Uh, you have for part A earned 40 credits, 10 years paying into FICA. Uh, you can buy part A that will kind of show some of the pricing. Teresa is gonna go over that. And then if you've been married for 10 years, even if you're divorced or uh, the uh, person you're married to is deceased, uh, you may qualify as well. So these are some of the qualifying, not everybody just, you know, just turn 65 and automatically get Medicare. To check for sure, we cannot tell you. So if you called our center to ask us, that's not our domain, or it's gonna be social security office that you're going to be working with either online, it's open in person, or you can call to verify your eligibility status online. They also have some information that you can fill in there. Again, .gov, make sure you're looking at the .gov site. All right, so if you're under 65, as I mentioned on the last slide, and you've been collecting social security for disability after the 24th month, you're going to qualify and get sent the red, white, and blue card uh, for Medicare yeah, coverage. And then your coverage will begin the first day of the 25th month. And then, like I said, certain medical conditions, certain cancers, certain uh, diseases that we saw on the last slide, like Lou Gehrig's and stage renal will also qualify you. When can you sign up? So some of you, again, aging into Medicare right now, there's a seven month period, three months before you turn 65. This is the sweet spot. Uh, if you are not 65 yet, pull your phone out, figure out three months before and start putting in some calendar reminders. This is the best time to do it because it's going to ensure that your coverage starts on time. You can also sign up during your birthday month. It would start the month after then, the first of the month after that. 
Uh, and you can sign up the three months after you turn 65. That's your seven month window when you're first eligible for Medicare. The ideal time is the three months before you turn and the spacing's a little weird there. We have some special enrollment periods as well. So if you didn't sign up when you were first eligible because you have group health insurance, you may have a period of time where you can sign up at any point while you're still on that group health insurance eight months after you're terminated from that group health insurance or your spouse has the group uh, health insurance. But there are some things to think about in terms of what constitutes group health insurance. So for disability coverage, there has to be over 100 employees on that group health insurance. For non-disability, like you wanna just, you're aging into Medicare, but you like the plan that you're on and you're still working for the company, that group health insurance has to have at least 20 people on it as well. All right, how do you get your card? So the first part is to make sure that social security has your most up-to-date address on file because if you qualify, they know you're coming in, you've been collecting social security already maybe, or you've set up to start your payments, they're going to automatically mail you your card. It's going to come with Part A and Part B effective dates, which will look something like this on the card. So it'll say, you'll get your card in the mail. It's not automatically active. It's going to be active on the dates that you see right here. Uh, if you do nothing, when you receive the card, you will be automatically enrolled in Part A and Part B on the start date. Anybody know what's missing there for coverage? Part D, drug coverage. You don't have any drug coverage. Uh, so I've worked with some people who didn't realize they needed to even sign up for drug coverage. They weren't on any medications. They didn't think about it. And then five years forward, all of a sudden they needed to get medications. They had to sign up for a drug plan and they're paying a penalty because they didn't sign up on time. So we'll talk about that as we talk about the different parts. Disability will also receive that card in the mail on the first day of the 25th month of collecting social security uh, for disability. All right, if you're not collecting social security at the time you're gonna age in, this is where again, you wanna at the 90 days before, make sure you're checking with the social security office uh, to ensure that they're going to send you your card, that you're planning to start Medicare, that they've got the right address on file and that you qualify, you've paid in, you've lived in the US for at least five years, you ticked all of the boxes that we saw on the previous slides. Any questions so far there? Yes. Part A and B, if you qualify and you've received the card and it's got the start date on there. Keep your card, you've accepted part A and part B, you're still going to have to go through medicare.gov or figure out how you're going to get part D coverage at this point. Now, Medicare Part B is not free, or, or not free, nothing in here is free. We're gonna learn about that, but uh, you will pay a monthly premium plus a deductible for using Part B. And if anybody remember what Part B is covering? Outpatient and preventative services. So good thing is most of your preventative services, you actually, they will come out free, but you're still going to be paying a monthly premium. It's gonna be, Vin is gonna to talk to you about what those amounts are. You kind of see it up here. Um, roughly about 2000 a year in premiums and it could go up or down depending on your taxes filed two years prior. Um, so we'll talk about that. If you still have active coverage, then you may want to talk to your HR department. If you're still working or your spouse is still working and you qualify to stay on their insurance and delay Medicare, you will sign the back of the card and send it back. That's going to say that you're declining. What you're signing on the back of that card right here is that you do not want medical insurance right now. And they'll send you back a new card just with part A coverage. And you continue to use your private insurance or your company funded or your where you're working insurance at that point. Now, active coverage does not include COBRA, retiree, VA coverage, or individual health coverage, not from a company. So not group health coverage. So if you're on the marketplace and you're purchasing your own private, remember what I said, it needs to be at least 20 employees on a plan to count for uh, delaying your part B and not getting a penalty.
If you have current insurance through the marketplace, this applies to anyone. Some things to think about here. You will not qualify anymore. You have to go on to Medicare. And you're gonna start paying the premiums for part B once you're eligible for the Medicare. Careful canceling your marketplace if you've got other family members that are tied to your account as well. So that might, uh, might impact some of their insurance, uh, depending if you have a spouse who's not Medicare eligible and you've been on the marketplace together. Um, opting out of Medicare when you're eligible and keeping marketplace, nobody's gonna come right out of the blue and find you at home. Instead, when you do need to enroll again, you're gonna possibly hit some penalties for doing so and it's gonna cost you more. Um, to get Medicare down the road. Marketplace may also auto-enroll you in a plan. Humana, Aetna, uh, I'm trying to think of another name of a company right now, but they have plans on Marketplace for your coverage right now before you're Medicare eligible. They also have Medicare plans and they may send you information in the mail that says, hey, we see that you're about to turn 65. We'll automatically put you on our Advantage plan if you do nothing. And so you have to start paying attention to the thousands of pieces of mail. I hate checking my mail. Uh, I just had a note on a, one of my packages delivered from the mailman that said, please check your mailbox, your mailbox is full. Uh, and he was dropping it off. I'm not good at checking my mail, um, but you'll get a lot of different notices. You have to pay attention to the ones if you're on private insurance that might try to auto enroll you through the marketplace on their plan. Possibly of the 25 plus plans that we have in Nevada, that plan is perfectly fine for you, but it's also possible that you're going to end up paying more out of coverage, have to change your providers, or other things might happen. Yes? If you're getting your care via the VA. Yes. So VA coverage, and I'm going to refer to Teresa or Wayne if they want to answer. Uh, you can be eligible, but on this next, where does it jump? Right here. Uh, do I have VA listed? Uh, TRICARE. Medicare will pay first uh, unless you're on active duty. Great question, right? You can call Social Security first. While you still have your marketplace coverage, you just want to make sure that your marketplace coverage ends the day that your, uh, your red, white, and blue card has your start date for your Medicare coverage or your Advantage plan if you end up going on an Advantage plan. Uh, so you wouldn't wanna cancel your health insurance coverage before having your Medicare coverage active. Any other questions there? Anything to add? Yeah, I know you guys are coming up here for Teresa's. All right, um, HSAs. Health savings accounts, good to know that once you start Medicare, you can no longer contribute to health savings accounts. You'll get uh, dinged on your taxes. Uh, if you do, it's a best practice to stop contributing to an HSA at least six months before you start Medicare. That's a best practice that's recommended in the book that you'll see there. Uh, if you want to continue for any reason to contribute to an HSA, then you might want to be uh, delaying your uh, start of Medicare if you're eligible to do so. And then this is in the, it's on page 21. I won't go through all of the specifics. I just wanted to point out page 21 to you because there's often some uh, questions if you have dual coverage, if you have uh, a spouse that's still insured and, and they might also qualify, but you're now on Medicare, how does that work? This is a really, it just walks you through who's gonna pay first and how that double coverage may work. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lewis. You're probably tired of hearing from me. Yeah. All right, hope everyone can hear me. Uh, my name is Lewis and I'm a member of the uh, board that works with the Medicare Call Center at Roseman. Um, I'm doing a little bit of uh, active learning, as we call it, as students, where it's a good chance for us to kind of brush off the cobwebs, to make sure we're awake, and there's a little activity for us to all do. So um, in your handout, there is a... Oh, I'll turn it off. <laughs> oh, I'm loud enough. It's fine. Um, so uh, like I was saying, there is a little... There's uh, a Medicare lingo... Um, 
It is a active learning activity for you to work through. And we'll take a little bit of time to kind of go through some of the big vocabulary that we see a lot of. And there's a little bit of confusion along with some of these terms. So um, I'll give you guys uh, a little bit of time just to uh, talk amongst yourself, um, kind of in the Roseman way, this active learning, and it allows us to kind of uh, think it through first, and then we'll go over the answers after. So just take a minute and uh, match the term with its definition. And um, good luck. 90% pass rate. <laughs> That was my joke earlier. <laughs> you can't, you can miss, can you even miss one? There's no half credit, so. All right, so it looks like people are kind of wrapping up. So um, we can go through some of these. Uh, we'll go through these answers right now. Um, so for the first one, assignment, the Medicare assignment. Uh, if anyone wants to raise a hand, what, did, or what do you think the answer is? E, yes, exactly. Oh, do I have to use the, as, uh, yes, I should just, well, yeah, so the Medicare assignment, um, like you guys said, is that agreement by your doctor, provider, or supplier to be paid directly by Medicare, uh, as approved by Medicare, and to not bill you for any more than the Medicare deductible and coinsurance, so uh, that can really help lower out-of-pocket costs. But one thing to be careful of, and especially when talking to a provider, uh, a doctor or a supplier, is to see and make sure that it is the assignment, the actually the, the actual Medicare assignment, because uh, it can be a little bit, especially with some of this wording, there may be uh, providers that may not, they say they take Medicare, but maybe they don't take Medicare assignments. So that's something when you're out 
looking is something to ask, right? Because this will help lower the out-of-pocket costs with the uh, Medicare assignment. Very good. Um, what about number two, coinsurance in the back? B, oh, we skipped it. Oh, it's, I thought, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, so we'll skip to copayment. Um, the copayment is that set amount that you're going to pay for a service, and whether that's a doctor's visit or a medication. And it's going to be a, usually a fixed amount, whether that's $10, $15, or uh, $50. It's just that fixed amount, not a percentage based. And I think we, we go to, let's go to deductible. Uh, what do we think the answer is for deductible? C. Yep, exactly. Very nice. Um, that's that amount that you must pay for your health care prescriptions before the original Medicare, your drug plan, or your insurance begins to pay. All right. And for our next, which is the premium, what do we think? A. Very nice. Everyone's passing. Uh, the, period, uh, the premium is that periodic payment uh, that's going to be often most, most likely monthly uh, to Medicare, an insurance company or the healthcare plan for that, uh, for that coverage. And finally, with the one that was the tricky one, uh, coinsurance B, yes. Um, so it's that coinsurance is the amount that you may be pay, uh, required to pay as your share for a cost of the service. And that's gonna be after the deductible and it's gonna be usually a percentage, right? Um, so that was my little spot on the uh, little active learning for everyone. So hope everyone's awake. Thank you for participating in that with me. And I'll pass it to Teresa. It's going to be later. First, yeah, thank you. So for Part B, you pay 20% of your services. It wouldn't be your copay amount that they can pay necessarily, but it's those other services that they can charge for out of pocket that you would pay 20%. You might be paying out 35% for that. Um, I will then dive into the And that will really come into play with the Advantage plans, particularly. Thank you for making that comment. Okay, I'm going to have do some more active learning and have Lacey and Lewis and Ben. Where's Ben? I'll come down. Okay, come on down. We're going to talk about the parts of Medicare. So we've got A and B and C and D. And I'm explaining this on the phone all the day as I'm trying to help people understand the different parts and how they coordinate. And since I'm on the phone, I can't be as demonstrative as I want to be and what I want to do in front of you today. So we're going to have, um, Lewis will be A and B for the most part. For this purpose, A and B are going to be together with one person. Okay, we're going to give him the doctor's bag for going to the hospital. He's got the blood pressure cuff in there, the Fisher Price thing. Okay, then you can stay here. And okay, we're going to have Ben B part D. Okay, so he's almost a pharmacist and many months he'll be administering the medications. Okay, then Lacey is going to be Medigap supplemental policy. Okay, so keep that in mind as we talk about this. So A and B here, that's hospital 
is A, and you can see on this on the screen, that means inpatient hospital, and we'll talk a little more about that, skilled nursing facility, hospice care, or home health. B is basic, and then we'll be talking more about those. Um, but for when you receive that card, as Dr. Oswald said, it's going to have A and B on it, unless for some reason you're deferring part B um, because you've still got work coverage. And so A and B go together. Okay, so, but C, come back over here, Lewis. Okay. Okay, so the thing to understand is A plus B is original Medicare. And you have got to get part D separate. If you're gonna be on original Medicare, then you have to pick up or add a standalone Part D plan. And you have to also add a Medigap policy. If you want everything to be covered, then you've got A and B here that you're paying for your coming out of your social security check, your 164.90. You've got to add the price of a Part D and that's gonna cover 80% of most of your medical. If you want the other 20% covered, then you've got to purchase an additional Medigap or the other word for it is supplemental policy, okay? Or, scoot over here, Lacey, you choose part C and this all comes together, okay? Part C equals A plus B plus D, C for combined. So then it's a package deal and they come together. <laughs> yeah, these are great people. Okay, one, come back over for a minute. The other way to get supplemental is if you happen to qualify for Medicaid. So then you can stay on original Medicare and just get your Part D with your original Medicare and then Medicaid, if you're a certain level, which we'll talk about, Medicaid then acts as your supplemental. So then you're not paying for that. You're, the state is paying for it on your behalf, basically. Okay, thank you. Good participation. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at what, any questions about those different parts? The next slide shows how you've got to decide between what I was just demonstrating with the people. Okay, so here's two big choices. When you hit that point of 65, you've got a big decision. Are you going to keep original Medicare, the one that got mailed to you, and just call us and get a Part D plan or talk to an agent and consider if you're getting a supplement. So there's your heart, Part A, your Part B, and then you would need to call and get Part D if you don't want to face penalties later on down the road. Or, and this is the, oh, there's, okay and the supplemental or you choose the advantage plan where all of that is combined okay any questions on that yes great great question you're not going to get any dental coverage in original medicare you can add it um, to your medigap coverage it will not come as a part of your policy you can get a rider that will cover dental and pay more for it in this option. So here again, remember you're paying here, you're paying here, you're paying here, and then you can pay again for a little more dental or some is included in the Advantage plan. And vision also. Vision, dental, and hearing. Vision, dental, and hearing, we kind of say in one roll off the tongue, for they're in the Advantage plan, you'd have to pay extra in original Medicare. Great question. Oh yeah, that is just there because sometimes there's some Advantage plans that don't have Part D if you have it for the veterans where they can get their medications at the VA, but it's usually just all together. Okay, so here's some things to help Think about that big decision. Do you want original Medicare with the Medigap policy and the Part D like we demonstrated, or do you want the Advantage plan? And there's, there's reasons to consider for both, and it all depends on your personal circumstances. So the provider of original Medicare is Medicare themselves. The provider of the Advantage plan is Aetna, Anthem, Humana, Allwell, 
all of the private insurance companies who also provide supplemental plans. So you have to pay attention if you're talking about a Humana supplemental or a Humana Advantage plan. Those are different, okay? The providers in original Medicare, you can go anywhere in the nation and go right to a provider. They almost all accept original Medicare. And you can go directly to a specialist. In an Advantage plan, you are agreeing for um, being in their Advantage plan that you will use the providers within their network and you're agreeing that you will go to, that a primary care physician will need to refer you to a specialist. You cannot go directly to a specialist in an Advantage plan. As far as the premium, uh, yes, you'll pay $164.90 or more for original Medicare. And the same for the Advantage plan, once in a while you can pay less. There's some plans that will cost less than that $164. Part D coverage, you need to add it to, if you've got original, but if you get the advantage, it's almost always included. And then yes, you've got to consider that or you're gonna be facing 20% out of your own pocket of everything that the eight, original Medicare 80% did not cover with no cap. There's no cap um, on what that could add up to from a hospital stay or whatever. So that's important to consider. And no, you would never get, appropriately, you would never get a supplemental policy in addition to an Advantage plan that does not happen together. Okay. So here's looking at the cost of this. Part A, and I'm gonna just speed through this because we're gonna go, this is an overview of all of this. And you've got it on your paper, but as we go through, the different parts, we're going to break that down. So that's just seeing everything all in one slide. And here is what is not covered by Medicare in general. Most dental care, if you need dental care medically, then that would be a medical situation. But eye examinations related to prescribing glasses like optometry, that's not going to be covered. Yes, ophthalmology related to your medical condition would be covered. Dentures are not covered, cosmetic surgery, massage therapy. Their latest list says routine physical exams are not covered, mainly because there's semantics there. Wellness visits are covered, not routine physical exams. Hearing aids and exams for fitting them, not covered. Oops, long-term care and concierge care. None of that is covered under original Medicare. But many of these things are added to the Advantage plans as they are wanting to um, draw beneficiaries and compete with each other. They've added more and more things that they are willing to do. The, an Advantage plan has to cover everything that original Medicare covers. They have to cover that and they can choose to add more to that if they would, if they want to. Okay, so here's part A standing for admitted and that we talk about part A being the hospital coverage. So that's just to remember part A is for admitted now here's a little more specifics about the cost of part A itself. So the deductible for the services um, in part A, you're going to pay deductibles depending on the deductible period. That'll be in a future slide. So we'll get to that. Usually part A is free. We talk a lot about part A being free if you worked 40 quarters in the system, okay? If you worked, 30 to 39 quarters, then you're going to pay 207, 278. If you worked under 30 quarters, you're going to pay 506. So free depends on how much you've paid into the system through your time of working. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. So here is when you talk about A for admitted, hospital insurance is covering being an inpatient, also being at a skilled nursing facility, which we often call them rehabs. So being following hospital coverage, many times you're at a rehab, that is still part A. Um, nursing home care is covered as long as it's not custodial or long-term care, that is not covered by part A. Hospice care is part A and home health care is part A as well. The home health care often that follows the hospital time of being an inpatient. OK. 
Okay. So free is in quotes here because this is what you'd pay for having that insurance of part A. The first 60 days that you are in the hospital would be your benefit period. And you're gonna pay $1,600 per benefit period. So no matter how long you're in the hospital, anything up to $1,600 you're going to pay. That's not yet paid for by Medicare. At day 90 in the hospital, um, if you unfortunately have to be there that long, you're going to 400 a day, and then 91 through 150 is $800 per day, and there's a bonus 60 lifetime days that are thrown in there that can be parceled out after your 150 days each year, okay? Now, this could be a longer discussion, but I'll just quickly talk about the benefit period. You could have multiple benefit periods in a year. If you are released from the hospital and you're home for 60 days without going back to the hospital, then a new benefit period starts. But if you're just home for a month and you need to go back to the hospital, you're still within the same benefit period and that same $1,600. So that is important to understand. Okay, inpatient versus outpatient. We said A was admitted. So let's just have the quick example of, let's say Dr. Oswald and Dr. Rollins, that's my husband who also teaches at Roseman. They both go to the ER one evening and say, let's say Dr. Rollins has chest pain and Dr. Oswald has abdominal pain and they end up in the ER um, and are both seen there, but, and go, go through the admittance process. But one is, okay, this is something we need to admit you for. Let's, um, we need further um, decisions and we need them to weigh in. And so admission happens. Whereas with the other one, there's observation. And the observation could go into midnight, into 2 a.m., into the next day with no admission. It's not part A yet. That's still part B. And so you're going to be paying 20% of that time um, as opposed to starting your benefit period of the $1,600 in part A. So, and they have to let you know after two days of being outpatient that remember, you're still not admitted. <laughs> okay. Why is this important? Because inpatient costs are paid from part A and part B. So your part A gets you a bed in the hospital, is room and board, a bed in the hospital, not in a private room, but in a semi-private room, and the meals and the medications. But part B is what pays for the physician that's coming to see you in the hospital, okay? And then outpatient costs are what, what Vin will go over following me. This is another caveat to understand. If you're going to have... Um, skilled nursing in a skilled nursing facility or a rehab be paid for by Medicare, you have to have been in the hospital for three days, have had a qualified three-day qualifying stay. Okay. And this is the chart for the skilled nursing facility. The first 20 days after you've had the three-day qualifying period or longer in the hospital, it's going to cost you zero. After day 20, it's going to $200 per day. And then when you hit $100, I mean 100 days in a skilled nursing facility, then all the costs are on you, okay? Okay, turn it over to Ben. I think it's fine. I'm just gonna hold it. All right. All right. All right. Um, so my name is Ben. I'm a second year pharmacy student at uh, Henderson campus. So I'll be continuing the presentation with uh, Medicare Part B or 
we usually think of it as basic care or you know, for basic or primary care. Um, so I just want to kind of recap what Dr. Catherine Oswald kind of touched briefly in just several slides earlier about Part B enrollment. So do you need Part B? Um, eventually, yes, you do. But let's say at the time when you are eligible for Medicare, you're still working for uh, your employer and you're still using your employer coverage. So maybe you're happy with your coverage. You don't need Medicare yet. And Medicare says, that's fine. Okay, you're free to use your employer coverage. Uh, that's fine. We're not gonna um, charge you penalty for that. But let's say um, you, your, term, um, your coverage is terminated, right? So you stop working for any reason. So you're no longer using your employer insurance. So Medicare is gonna say, okay, so we're gonna give you a special enrollment period, usually for eight month period. So within that uh, uh, eight month period, you can sign up for Medicare Part B without having to pay a penalty to your premium. But if you miss that period, then you might have to incur a penalty. You might have to pay a penalty. Okay. All right, so um, what does it cover, right? Um, so as Dr. Oswald mentioned earlier, um, unlike Part A, Medicare Part B covers the majority of um, the outpatient services. You can think of them as your doctor visit, your lab work, your screening, things like that. It also covers durable medical equipment or DME. Uh, some of the common ones are you know, blood glucose monitor, test strip, lancet, your nebulizer, you name it. And also preventative services. Um, you can think of them as vaccines or several types of screening. So what is the cost, right? Um, so unlike part A, where you have to pay a deductible every hospital admission, right? For part B, there is an annual deductible. So you only have one deductible per year. If you meet the deductible, then you're, you're good for the year. Medicare will pay for 80% of most services and you will be responsible for 20% uh, for most services. Uh, unless you have a supplemental plan, also known as Medicap, that will fill in that 20% gap. And for preventative services, oh, yes, we have a question. That would be from January to December. Yes. So it could hit twice, right? So if you yeah. got coverage starting in April, right? You're gonna have that deductible and then it resets in January. It doesn't give you a 12 month uh, calendar that first time that you're on Medicare. And then from there out, it's every January. Good question. Awesome, thank you. All right, um, so premium, um, I think Teresa is kind of touched briefly earlier, a couple of slides ago. So it's gonna be 164.90. Um, we put a little asterisk there because this is uh, income-based premium. So the premium is gonna be based on uh, your income. All right, so this is the chart. So if you notice there's income, sorry, income that side. So if you, uh, if your income is above um, certain threshold, then Medicare will kind of calculate that and then it will raise your Part B premium. And one thing to keep in mind, um, the premium is gonna be in 2023 and Medicare is gonna look at your 2021 tax return income. So it's gonna be two year prior, right? So they're gonna look at your income two years prior to determine your, your premium currently. Yes. So 
under the very first column file included the tax return. Did that first form be ninety one thousand dollars? Oh, good question. I. Oh yeah, I think we made a typo there. It should be ninety-seven. Sorry about that. Yeah, ninety-seven. Should be ninety-seven. Jesus. First, I like your keen eye, but yes, this is correct. So it's ninety-seven thousand or less individual one ninety-four. You're going to be at that one sixty-four ninety this year. Jo uh, individual, this should be ninety-seven right, right here. here. So 97 to 123 or joint 194 to 246, you're going to be paying that. And again, that was your 2021 filings. Is that and a, then it yes. goes up from there. Uh, yes, Dr. Ross. Now, is, that, is it true that one side of the set has yeah. or deductible or mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry, the gain from one? Onward, it's not like it will back to change. They don't adjust that down later on. They adjust it every, uh, every year, year, unfortunately. Yeah. The two year previous filings. Yeah. Every every year. So if you think about it, um, and my in laws, I could use as an example, they had shared with a, a story of you where they took some money out of your retirement savings. That counts as your income. It goes up, but two years later, you're not taking that amount out and you might not have adjusted that for your monthly living expenses that you are going to be having. So as you make decisions with your money, you won't have to be thinking two years in advance and just budgeting or planning ahead that certain premiums may be going up then uh, based on what you have. And your income level that you were at before you turned 65 two years prior is probably higher than when you turned 65 and what you're getting per month. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Oswald. And thank you for pointing that uh, typo. It's my typo. <laughs> All right, so um, so here are just a list of um, many the common preventive services that are covered under uh, Medicare Part B. So, and these are 100% free. Um, so a lot of beneficiaries are not aware of that. So just uh, something to keep in mind. Um, these are, you can see a lot of screening there. Got you know, HIV screening, lung cancer, diabetes screening. And Medicare also, Medicare Part B, also cover the uh, yearly wellness visit. So, and that is 100% uh, free. And some of the common immunization that you see here, got COVID-19 vaccine, flu shot, and this is going to be new for 2023 uh, for shingles. Yeah. So starting next year, Medicare Part B will uh, cover the shingles. The shingles. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Don't get your shingles shot in December and in January. Yes. <laughs> it's a very good point. It's true. Excellent point. <laughs> All right, question. All right. All right, so durable medical equipment or DME. So uh, our state of Nevada is a part of a, a program called Medicare um, Competitive Bidding Program. So essentially this program was created to kind of regulate the price of the, the uh, medical equipment there. Um, it does not apply to all uh, supplies and equipment. Uh, currently only applies to off the shelf back braces and knee braces. And of course you have to have a prescription in order to you know, uh, bill to, to, be, to be billed through Medicare. And, and they have to get it through a Medicare approved supplier also known as contract supplier, and they can find the supplier. Sorry about that little cover up there. So they can find the contract supplier and competitive bid suppliers on Medicare.gov. All right, so these are just some examples of um, the durable medical equipment that are covered by Medicare Part B. Um, so yeah, you can see some of the common um, supplies there, such as the blood sugar monitor, the test strips, 
right? The uh, nebulizer there, uh, and the canes, walkers. Those are some of the comments. So. Mm. And that was uh, it for Medicare Part B. Uh, does anybody have any question before I turn over for, to my uh, people here? Please. As right. they're transitioning the mic, just pointing out on some of that durable medical equipment as well, that it's not always equipment you get to keep. Sometimes it's only qualifies for rentals. And I know Vin said that, but um, sometimes we think that we're automatically going to get the cane or the walker or the bed. And really you're just renting it for a period of time and have to return it to the supplier. A scooters? That's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look. Yes. Uh, if you have a qualifying medical uh, note from the doctor, possibly. Why, that's why we have Wayne here. Other question? Go for it. What does the European the representation of the EPO and the agent on a second Are you trying to jump ahead in our presentation? You're trying to jump ahead. We've got us we've got slides. We're gonna come we're gonna come to that. So hold Oil that question. Alert. And then Bev, did you have a question? Yes, I did. I'm wondering about the patient's lips. What about if you have the uh, lips that get you from your lower level to your upper level? Is that like a whole lip? No, not that. Not to your lips. That would just say you want like a stair lift. You're talking about like moving a wheelchair up or down. Yeah, hey, I see Wayne shaking his head as well. I don't think we have seen that. Because that's not first look back at their verbal and they had grants and stuff where they could get that kind of thing because it's not actually for your ADLs or like continuous ADLs. It, that has that's something that you incur on your own. But even if you're you have no shower on your own mind, you have to get up that second or maybe to the bathroom to have the shower to cover whatever. Yeah, it's not it's not something that medically covered because it's not considered a Health benefit. I mean, you may need it and stuff, but it's just a it's a consequential versus something immediate. <laughs> There's lots of organizations and stuff that help out with that kind of item, but it just won't be covered by Medicare. Hi. Okay, so my name's Lacey. I'm going to be going over. Right, Diaz and Jug. Um, also, if you have any questions for me, please direct them to him in the green striped shirt. His name is Wayne. So just be like, hey, Wayne, uh, Lacey, stop talking and talk to him, okay? Perfect. So actually, I'm going to cover a couple different topics, but we're going to start with part Diaz and Jug. Okay, so I think we've got what a deductible premium and copay is, hopefully. We've got that down. It has been explained like three times. Only thing I want to point out here. These are upper limits. So I don't want you guys seeing this and being like, oh my God, $505. That's not common. Teresa and I were talking about this earlier. Like 60 was like the higher end of normal. And you've seen this again. So it does go off your previous two year filing and it is adjusted yearly. That was a great question from Dr. Rollins. So it does get adjusted, but there you go. Okay, so just like Ben let off with part B and he was like, well, what if I don't want it? This happens with part D too. So you might be like, I, I have drug coverage. I don't need this. I know I'm 65, I don't need it. Okay, you don't have to have it, but they need one thing from you. It's called a, where is it at? Is this the wrong one? Oh, there it is. Oh, this is the other slide. Creditable coverage letter. So you get it from HR. Dr. Oswald talked about that earlier. Legally, they have to give it to you before you start panicking. So you get this letter, you send it in, they have it on file, great. If you do not do that, this is where the penalties come from. So you can't opt yourself out. You have to provide evidence that you're being covered. I wanna highlight a common one this happens with is COBRA, which Dr. Oswald mentioned earlier. So a lot of 
COBRA beneficiaries, they consider or they think it's creditable coverage, and unfortunately it's not. There we go. Okay. Oh, yes. So we're in part two right now. We're going to go through the process of the or will I be downscaling to like the $20 a month? I direct you to Wayne. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the VA. But we don't have the VA miles of paperwork in place yet. So once we get to the point of pharmacy is covered, what do I do with the like a monthly profession? I, I, I'm sorry. Right. So the VA, so the VA is not considered the same network as Medicare. So right. the VA, even though you get the medications from the VA for free, it will never be considered credible coverage for Medicare okay. purposes. So then I just bump down to the lower level of the correct. Myself. Correct. I would. So the two. Right, to eliminate the penalty, you would always want to just take the least, um, you know, just to have it, you would take the least amount of uh, premium front. Perfect. Thank you. This is going great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just keep on. Seriously, I'm like, and you, and you, and not me. Okay, so I'm excited to bring this one up. Um, like they mentioned, we are pharmacy students, so we spent time in the pharmacies. Um, anyone in here familiar with the prices of insulin? You can just kind of nod, shake your head. It's a lot. Yeah. I'm <laughs> just like me. Um, so it's a lot. This is really cool. So starting January 1st, they're putting a cap on insulin. I just, the only thing I'm going to highlight is it varies which types depending on your plans. So the cap applies, but there might be a slight adjustment as to which one you're getting dependent on which plan you have. But that cap is $35 monthly copay. Okay. So there, I've, there, I've seen patients who walk out paying three, four hundred dollars for insulin before. So this is a big deal. So very excited. All right, catastrophic coverage. Come over here. Don't look at that. Look at this. Okay. Don't look at that. It's confusing. Raise your hand if you've heard of the donut hole and not the one you eat. Wow, it's just like four people. That is incredible. You can't call it that. Yes, it's gone. There's no more donut hole. There's no more donut hole. It's gone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, it gave like donut shops a bad rep. No, okay, guys. So, okay, there are four phases. I kind of combined the first two right here, initial and deductible. I'm too short, so Lewis helped me out. So it's just I and D. So <laughs> what happens here is this is kind of the beginning, okay? So January 1st hits. And in the beginning of the year, especially if you guys have gone to your pharmacy, you're paying less as a patient. You come in, you're paying less. And then all of a sudden, and it varies, there's never one set time for anybody. You come in and the unfortunate pharmacy tech or pharmacist who has to tell you this is like, oh, hey, it jumped $30. So you have a $30 copay or whatever amount it was. And you're like, no, last time it was $3.20. And you're like, they're like, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. You'll have to call your insurance. And you're like, what is going on? This is going on. You moved phases. Okay, now you can look at the slide. So what happens is this $4,666 got met. So that's that first line. So between you and your plan, you both paid $4,466. No, I don't know how you track that. Please don't ask me. You both paid that much. <laughs> Very sarcastic. I don't know if you noticed yet. But, and it bumped you from this deductible phase into this coverage gap, okay? In the coverage gap, you are now responsible for paying 25% of your drug costs, which you were not previously paying 25%. That's why it was so low. And you're like, Lacey, that's horrible. I don't care if they change the name. That's terrible. How do I get out of it? Well, you have to pay out of pocket to reach the $7,400. Okay. So you need to get from 4660 to 7400 in out of pocket. It resets at the first of every year. So if you don't meet this amount by December 31st, good news. 
If you get stuck in that coverage gap and it's December 31st and you're still here paying that 25% of your drug costs, the first hits, we're back over here. Build a prescription in January. Build a prescription in January. Hopefully you can wait that long. <laughs> Maybe the insulin cap will help a little with that. But I know I'm like, oh, that hurts me. <laughs> But um, 90 day supplies, just saying. Okay, so I'm gonna ask now, I'm afraid to ask. Oh, no, I haven't, I'm not done. We had one more layer. Okay, let's say somehow you figured it out and you saved up because you knew this because I just told it to you. So now you know, and you saved up for when this happened and you did it, you got it. You're like 7401, guess what happens? The insurance is like, fine, I'll pay 95, you pay 5%. And that's called catastrophic coverage. This is the lowest amount for the most part that you would pay. And again, this resets at the first of every year. So if you don't hit catastrophic coverage, that's okay. You will go back into the like deductible phase later. I'm scared, but what questions do you have? <laughs> Terrified, everyone like hates this. Some things to keep in mind and your pharmacy, you wanna always think they're looking out for you, but they're very busy uh, and they might not notice this, right? So we said, don't fill it in December, if you're going to reset in January, but maybe don't fill the 90 day supply in December, yeah, right? To, to make sure that you only got what you needed through December. <laughs> so end of the year, kind of pay attention to how much you're filling of your medications, but don't go without your medications. We're not advocating for that. don't <laughs> expect that you're getting a certain drug at a certain pharmacy to go to another one and you're going to pay. It's very true. Uh, different pharmacies, depending on your drug plan, because remember, drug plans are private. They've contracted. Uh, you'll pay different amounts potentially for your co-pays as well as for the drugs in the catastrophic, or not in the catastrophic, in the coverage gap phase. And then sometimes it's actually cheaper to pay for your drugs out of pocket to begin with and not ever hit the coverage gap. Some of your medications that would be getting you into that coverage gap would cost you less than your copay sometimes uh, and not be billed to your Medicare. So really being savvy, again, these students, they live this. If you have questions about that or wanna to try to help to calculate some of that, uh, they can help, Teresa. And it doesn't have to be a surprise at the pharmacy counter on medicare.gov. You can see all the different coverages and what they'll be. I promise we mean no harm at the pharmacy. I know we are the first people you talk to and you're like, what is going on? And I'm like, I don't know either, but I do, but most people don't. So um, <laughs> I'm just going to pitch the call lab real quick, but you can call Wayne or Teresa and they can help you work through this. This is a lot. We are telling you guys a lot in a very short period. Yes. Do they? Yeah. I have their phone number. 968-6615. <laughs> but seriously very helpful also um this is all very nevada specific for the most part like some of the stuff we're highlighting no then put your hand down um this is very nevada specific other pro like other states have programs like medicare assistance program that we have here which is what wayne and Teresa work with us with through um so I don't know what it's called in all the other states, but if you do move out, maybe like seeking out and finding out what their Medicare assistance resources, because they are certified counselors. Okay, what did you want, Vin? Yeah. yeah. Your insurance and the manufacturer, that total, the, the difference. So you're not paying the 3000 to go up to 7400 it's going to be your out of pocket cost mm. and your insurance and manufacturer so Thank you. yeah he's so correct in you're not care. responsible for the 3000 there the difference is yeah it's not so i just want to point that out thank you ben okay all right we're we good and i'm oh yes Wayne. so dr oswald brought up a great point about like if you're in your last ninth or last month and you're in the coverage gap yeah, to fill your prescription and she's saying instead of getting 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days. Get, get your 
So another possible way to see that is talk to your provider. Well, I work in a clinic as well. A lot of the times, with the more expensive medication, the uh, providers actually have access to samples. And the pharmaceutical reps are willing to provide those samples because you are on that medication and they know you're going to be spending the money for it the following year or whatnot. So especially there, the one thing you can do throughout the year, if you know you're going to be at the cover scap earlier on in the year, see if your provider can do every other month or every third month, it at least cuts down your, your out-of-pocket expense. But specifically, especially if it's towards the end of the year and you're not going to get, take, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the catastrophic phase, then maybe ask to see if you can get some, uh, some samples um, before that happens to kind of offset your out of pocket costs. I knew this was a slide. I knew it was going to be here. We stopped. But, but just one quick question. Yes. I mean, obviously, samples I understand, but if you were to say, I'm going to pay out of pocket because it's cheaper, I'm just going to pay for the drug, mm -hmm. that's not going against the amount that they're, they're calculating. Absolutely. Yes. So the question was, if you pay out of pocket, that doesn't count towards that amount. That's correct. So that's the problem is if you're not paying through the insurance, then you get the 90 day. yep, you still get the 90 day. Yes. <laughs> but yes, that is a good point. So you guys got this. See, I don't even know why I'm up here. Okay. I'm going to hit net. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, just in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, and I'll actually, I do touch on what happens if you lose credible coverage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit next. Okay, I got the thumbs up. We're going. All right, guys, so we're done. No more Part D. Don't ask me anything else. Okay, we're on a Medigap, so I want you to change your brain. This is different. Uh, I really like Teresa's example. Okay, so here is, I think this was Lewis. Here's Vin, so the boys. And then this was kind of me. This was the first time I had the sign. Okay. So we're talking about Medigap policies, which goes with original Medicare. So when you think Medigap, I want you to think original Medicare. Okay. This is a very busy slide. Bear with me. So what is a Medigap policy? Medigap is supposed to help offset the part A and B costs on original Medicare. So that's the point. It's working with A and B costs. And what happens is when you turn 65, there's a six month period after you turn 65 where you can apply or enroll in any Medigap policy. After that six months, they do something that Teresa just taught me. I didn't know what that word meant and now I can't find it. Underwriting, it's on there somewhere. I heard it. Underwriting. When you get your Part D. Okay. Get your Part D. So if a person has worked 10 years and mm -hmm. never took their Part D, that's when it starts when they get their Part D. That is very important because it's that open up. I'm just kidding. Slight counter to that. What about disability? Because you can have Part A and B earlier. Okay. Very cool. Yes. And you want to fill in that gap, you either pick it out of your pocket and you bring that in. Beautiful. He should be teaching. I don't know why I'm up here, guys. There's so many teachers. Oh, he is a teacher. See, there's too many of you in the audience for us. Okay. So, well, generally speaking, from the part B, okay. Okay. The main thing to take away there, though, is that once you get Part B coverage, whether you get it at 65 or you get it 10 years down the road because you worked an extra 10 years and you delayed it, you want to, if you're going to be on original Medicare, consider your Medigap plan at that point because they can't discriminate for anything. Uh, after the six-month period, if you have some uh, medical conditions, the private company can say, no, we're not going to give you a Medigap plan or we're going to charge you more for the Medigap plan. Absolutely. And that's the underwriting. Thank you, though. I appreciate the correction. So with that, outside of that six month window, they can do this underwriting. Now, let's say after you started, you got your part B, you did it within that six month time frame. 
you now get something, this is new, it's an annual open enrollment period. So once a year, then you're free to change in between Medigap policies if you want with some limitations. So I'm gonna hop over to this one. So these are the plans. It just looks like somebody wrote the alphabet on the top. I understand that, but you can kind of hop between them going that way, <laughs> not this way. So whatever you start with, like plan N has a lot of benefits. You can't hop down or you can hop down to less, but you can't start from less and gain more. Okay. So it goes that way when you're switching. This is all stuff um, in terms of Medigap that you would talk to plan specifically and kind of see which each one includes and what it would look like if you enrolled in it after that six month period varies because then they can do the underwriting and request your medical records and they could potentially deny you from enrollment. So that's why we really push that six month window when part B starts. Just kind of reiterating what I said, addendum though, because we have 65 and it's the part B one. And this is important. This is why I was kind of telling you earlier with Teresa's example, part A, B and D, original not Medicare Advantage, that's that part C. So I'm gonna move into Medicare Advantage. You cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medigap. It's kind of like double coverage and it's actually illegal. So if a broker ever tried to sell you one, for example, and you were a Medicare Advantage recipient, it is like illegal, they could get in a lot of trouble. Okay, so different subject, special, Special assistance programs, this is income-based. So now we're thinking more low income, we're out of Medigap. This is not related to Medigap. I hop through a lot of subjects, that's why I'm trying to differentiate. So full Medicaid, this is a state program. Medicaid has different levels. And depending on your income, you could qualify to receive benefits based on the levels. This is an example of one of them, it's QMB. So those are the income limits. This does change every year though. So like if you take a picture, you take this home next year, this, these numbers will not be the same. It's just for a reference point. Also, this is one of the higher levels. There's still slim B and QI below it. So keep that in mind. These aren't the only ranges, but there are state run programs to help you. And this one's specifically for part A and B. This is our federal program called Extra Help. And it's helping you with part D if you qualify. It's also income based. And for 2023, max generic cost, so a generic medication, $4.15, brand 10, 35. So this is again, all in the drug world. This one's part A and B. Okay, and these are needs-based income programs. Okay, so original Medicare, we're wrapping that up. Things to remember, penalties, don't be late. Make sure that if you need a letter of creditable coverage, you get that to avoid that lifelong Part D penalty, it is lifelong. There are some, everything's got a what if exception, but in your head, I want you to think it's lifelong, okay? And then they already covered how part A and B work. 63 days to enrollment in drug plan if your employer coverage ends. So you have 63 days once you're not covered to kind of get enrolled in that like whatever plan, it could be part D if you don't have part A or B. And then these are for that supplemental insurance again. So that's the Medigap stuff we just covered. Okay, any questions? Cause I'm about to move to Advantage. So we're getting away from original Medicare. Yes. Okay, I'll try. When? Mm -hmm. It's not a must, it's an option. Now you're talking strictly about VA, not TRICARE, right? You're talking about st strictly right. better affairs. So you're just in a separate network. So basically, no, you don't have to take Medicare, but you will not be able to use civilian provider, civilian access because you're, you're opting into a network. Kind of look at it like an HMO. Your HMO is the VA network. So we've had a lot of veterans where they will choose that option going, well, why am I going to pay for this one? This is free and I'm fine. I'm always going to use that. You get for 30 years. Why am I going to, you know, take, partake of that? The scenarios that we've come across are the planning ahead, not knowing what's coming in the future. You chose not to take the Medicare network, which is completely fine. You, I hope you're not using it. Later on, you move and you move to an area where there's not a veterans hospital. The hospital or VH access is not nearby. 
the closest three is 300 miles away. And now you want to opt into the Medicare network in order to have civilian access or to have access to medical care without having to go to the VA. Now you are subject to when can you enroll and when you do the penalties involved because now you're accessing that network and you're ac accessing it when you wanted access and not when you should have access. What if the VA says, sorry, the apology is part of your access you all does did they pay for it because they're sending you out or then do they have to have better share of no you're still considered under the VA network because the VA is referring you out because they don't have the ability to put you there. They're paying that, they're flipping that bill because they're referring you out. But if you go to the dermatologist or whatever without that VA referral, now that's on you. So if I did want to get Medicare as a safety net, then Medicare covers first percentage and then the VA covers. So the, that's why I say the VA network and the Medicare network don't coordinate together. They don't play well together. You're just, you have two separate networks. So if you want to look at it this way, it's like you bought a Sarah Club membership, you bought a Costco membership. Just because you have a Costco doesn't allow you to actually see Sarah Club. But you can, as long as you have both cards, you can stop at either one. It's the same kind of concept. You, you can choose one, you can choose both, you can choose neither, but you only have access to the ones that you partake in. But the VA does play with, sorry, the Medicare does play, play with TRICARE. Yes. But not with the VA. Correct. The TRICARE is a paid into, yeah, they have a whole different uh, network. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Both. Think of both VA and TRICARE. Think of both VA and TRICARE. Okay. Hey, guys, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> So Lewis is handing these out and um, how you're talking to Wayne right now, you guys have great questions. And with Teresa, they've given you so many little tidbits. This is what we do. And we can stay on the phone with you for hours. And we have done that. So Lewis has got these. Please grab one, even if you're like, eh, I'm sick of hearing it. Our phone number is on there. You can call and make an appointment too. Okay. For time's sake, I'm going to go a little quickly. You're not allowed to ask me questions anymore or Wayne. Okay. So... <laughs> Part C, Advantage Plan. So C as in combined. So when we think about Part C, that combination, it's Part A, B, and D. It's all of them together. Remember, no Medigap policy, okay? No medical Medigap with Medicare Advantage. Somebody asked earlier about like PPO. So that's PPO's preferred provider. When you think of this one, it's you have to usually you stay in network. You can go out of network. That's a good benefit to this, but it's usually associated with a higher cost. HMO is another version. You need to stay in network and you do need a referral for specialist. PPOs, that's not the case. So that's kind of a perk over here. So PPOs, a lot of beneficiaries do like that freedom to kind of move around even if there is an incurred cost. Okay, so I kind of said a lot of this, that when you think of Medicare Advantage, you think of network. So we're staying within a network. No supplemental, that's a Medigap. Okay, this is a summary of the breakdown of the cost. As a Medicare Advantage beneficiary, usually this is just deducted straight out of Social Security. It's one lump sum they're taking out. This is not something that you as receiving this benefit would need to worry about, but this is kind of what it looks like. When you're in a Medicare Advantage, you do get a Medicare Advantage card based on your plan. At that point, we ask you to take your original Medicare red, white, and blue card and put it safely away for a different rainy day. Use this card at your pharmacy and your doctor's office. And how do you choose between the three? It's all about you, health, cost, and lifestyle. So if you need something where you can move around and go to different states, maybe original is better. If you want something a little more affordable, maybe it's Medicare Advantage. Okay, any questions? No, I'm going to hand this over to Teresa. Okay. We've had a great overview at this point, and I um, the remaining time the remaining slides just talk about special enrollment periods, which we're happy to counsel with you about individually, um, and or 
I can show you how to go live on medicare.gov. I don't know if everyone wants to see that or you'd like to just come down and see a personal demonstration. Are you? You don't take any offense if you want to get up and do this at this point. I just hear several people around. Okay, so this is Medicare.gov with all things Medicare. So you can sign and get your own account on here once you have a Medicare card. You're welcome to read as much about anything on here without your own account. There's a lot of good YouTube videos here under basics. It will tell you a lot of information about getting started with Medicare. Um, you'd click on any of these and there's um, videos and tutorials. If we go back and we talk about um, actually comparing plans, what I'm going to have to do right now is log in with or uh, continue without logging in. So I'll just put in my zip code where you are going to choose between original where you are you looking at a drug plan or an advantage plan? That's what we're most often looking. So if we just put in a drug plan here and apply it, then it's going to ask, do you get any help from any of these programs? I'm going to say, I'm not sure and continue with logging without logging in. Yes, I want to see drug costs. That's the whole point of being able to compare plans within here. So then it will do a quick fill with anything that you put in. So let's say we're going to add lisinopril. We've added it. You just clarify what how much you take. You take the highest dose of that. How often do you take it? Obviously, this affects the cost. You take half as much or twice as much. Um, as that, depending on what your doctor's prescribed. So let's add one more quickly. We'll say, I don't even know, I'm not a pharmacist, I don't even know if these two drugs are okay together, but <laughs> we're gonna say if that's okay. <laughs> okay, so those are your two drugs. Um, now I'm done adding drugs. I'm gonna take a look at pharmacies. And so see how it automatically, I can put mail order, Walgreens, I'm going to do just some of the main ones so I can quickly see um, all of those. And then done, all of those are added in here. And it will save these things from visit to visit. So here we go. It's sorted lowest first. The, with those two drugs, being someone on those two medications, here is the cheapest one coming up first, well care value script. Okay, it's going to cost $11 a month. And in order for the Courtesy of paying $11 a month, these drugs will cost me this. The next one would be a cheaper lower, a cheaper monthly cost, but the total would be greater. And so you can scroll through and see all of those. And any of them, then you just take a look at more details. So this is telling me that um, for $11 a month, those two drugs are not going to cost me anything. And so it's showing me the difference between in this case, they're they're not they're the same price at any of those pharmacies, um, but that's not always the case, depending on what you've put in or what plan. Like if we went back to the results and tried another plan, thinking. Okay. We can add another drug. Right, right. Okay, so it automatically it automatically switched what plan would be the recommended plan. It's recommending Walgreens. I'm going to pay this much a month, and then I'm going to pay that much. And this is the lowest one. See, the next one's fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. But you have the ability to shop this way before before going and see this enroll button you can do this from the comfort of your own home 
that's your that's your cost yeah that's your cost yeah so if i go to plan details here this is telling me now it's cv it's first of all walgreens and mail order are the preferred methods that that plan wants me to use um, these are both in network but i'm going to pay more there so the yearly cost for a torvastatin is 11 at walgreens nine getting it through the mail and then month by month Yeah, right, right. And that's a yearly cost though. That's not a month. Yeah, that's a yearly cost of 1100 or 1200. And then this breaks it down per month. You can see this is put in as a 90 day fill. In the mail order, it's 90 days. So you're gonna pay 476 in January. So here's what you're gonna pay each month for all your drugs. So it either shows you each month for every drug or all year for one drug. your drug, bearing a new health diagnosis or something you're going to be able to kind of start to budget too. Look at what happened. 48, 48, 48. September hits 131. Yeah. What happened? Coverage gap. Yeah. So yeah. you can help to predict what your finances might be if your drugs stay pretty stable and you're using the same pharmacy all the time uh, and following the plan. Yeah. It is fluid. So this will be fluid uh, with Medicare. They will update this sometimes daily, weekly, monthly. You sometimes see changes during open enrollment. A plan that you look at all of a sudden changes slightly a few weeks later. They try to avoid that, uh, but it is a fluid site. And to use some of the terms that we, sorry, Robert, to, that we talked about. So here you've met your deductible in January because it was a $505 deductible, but you had an expense enough drug that you met it. And then here's the prediction, when you'll enter the coverage gap is September. And just as you saw down here, that's when the price dropped. So you can see exactly when you'll get to that point. Yes. And there's right, and there's new, um, new in 2023. There's a, the plans are expected to provide real time predictions of what their formulary is, what you you can expect to pay, and what drug alternatives should be available to you. So that they've not had to do, and that's coming now that that's expected, so that you should be able to know what you're going to pay. Questions about this? I'm happy to help you set one up. Look at it for drugs. They do the same thing for Advantage plans. And then the Advantage plans may also show you some of the vision, dental, other things that would be included in an Advantage plan as well. So you can do it like Teresa said without signing in. And if you sign in and you input all of your drug information and you create an account, then it's going to save it for you. So when you go back to run the numbers or see the plan next year, that information is stored for you. So you don't have to keep putting it in again and again and again. It will also show you what you've recently filled. It knows what you filled. So at, when you first go in, it'll have the whole list of what you recently filled and you say, yes, I'm still on that or no, no, no. That was just an antibiotic and you take it off. Make sure you're on .gov. This information yeah. you will put in, if you go to .com, it asks for this information the same, but you're looking at a single private company that's trying to sell you their product. So .gov, 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 make sure you're on .gov. So here's Advantage plans. So in addition to the drug information, you see a little green check if they offer all of these things, and they'll tell you more benefits. This one happens to not offer home safety. But if I go to the plan details of any of the Advantage plans, not only is it going to tell me drug prices, but it's going to tell me um, how much vision, dental, and hearing each of those are going to offer as well. Okay, any questions? Okay. Okay, real quick before we wrap up, if we might just do questions after, but um, a couple of things. December 9th, please join us for staying happy and healthy through the, throughout the holidays. 
our employees that are here with their moms, if you could just make sure that you come up for a photo, I'd like to get a photo of all of you. And a huge round of applause for our amazing presenters. Thank you all for being here. We're so grateful to have you and please stay well, everybody. So lean, lean on this chair, huh? I'll get your walker, but lean on this chair. Right, just lean against it, okay? I'll get your walker. Just kind of use it to stand. Just lean, I'll sit. You got to go back. I was going to stand a little bit. Best picture ever. Best picture ever, right? I'm not sure. It smells like their mom. Right. Yeah. Well, I've been there, not like my mom. She's my mother-in-law. I've been there for this reason. I have my mom leading because I have a shape. I have a walker, honey. Yeah. 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 Well, I think Rachel, you can go to the hospital. I'm Oh, yeah. 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 Y